Hello and welcome to the video. This is part of the PixHawk 2020 series. Now, there are two that you can go and have a look at, links in the description. First one is all about how to use a PixHawk system in a plane, uh, putting it into a Nano Talon. And then there's also another series which is running our Copter, putting it inside this reference frame here, a 450 class quadcopter. But one of the common questions that I get is, well, how do you add FPV? onto something like a Pixhawk. Now, it's an interesting question because the Pixhawk and Ardu Pilot aren't really designed for FPV. They're designed for a slightly different use case, but there are absolutely options if you want to use FPV. Now, what most people mean, I think, when they ask me about FPV is not whether or not they can put camera and video transmitter in alongside a Pixhawk. You absolutely can. Nothing to stop you at all. I think what people are asking for is to get an on-screen display from the Pixhawk into their goggles so they can see important information like height, speed, battery voltage, distance, direction to home, all that goodness. So let's talk about a couple of the options first of all, and then I'll show you the plug and play option from Holybro, actually, uh, that you just plug into this and will work without a lot of the messing about. So the first option you've got if you want to add FPV onto an Ardu plane or Ardu copter build is to not use the Pixhawk at all, is to use something like this. Now this was the build I did a while ago, putting an omnibus flight controller, 20 pound flight controller with Ardu plane in a little 600 millimeter AR wing. And it works really well. The really nice thing is about a year, year and a half ago as I'm recording this, uh, a developer created the on-screen display pieces and it was updated quite rapidly. And it supports the on-screen display that's inside the Omnibus flight controller that other things like iNav and Betaflight use. So you can absolutely use it in that way if you're not using a Pixhawk. Similarly, I also used the Matek F405 board, again with Arduplane, this time in an AR wing. Again, links to all these series down below. And again, Arduplane was set up to use the onboard OSD that's part of that setup. Now, there are a couple of options that I've looked at on the channel as well. If you want to get information from the Pixhawk with some kind of FPV feed as well. The first one, which is relatively expensive, is called Hearlink. That's an Android based controller that fits in your hands and also will stream down video as well and have it all presented in your hands. And if you're uh, an Ardu plane or Ardu copter pilot of old, you like the mission planner style layout, but you want something more portable, that's really good, but it's not cheap. The other option is to use something like this T12. Again, links to this in the description. Now this isn't something that's very popular in the West. Uh, from what I understand, lots of pilots in the Far East use it, particularly in farming and agriculture. It's a relatively expensive system. You uh, can stream the video, the telemetry information back down, and you can have all that displayed on your Android or iOS device that's kind of clipped onto the top of the radio. But again, that's not exactly what a lot of people after when they're talking about an on-screen display, they just want the key information displayed so they can keep hold of things like that battery voltage, altitude, distance, direction to home. And that is where the last pieces come in. Now this is a Minim OSD. The Minim OSD was something that I looked at a while ago. Uh, Minim OSDs are these little boards. They're relatively cheap and cheerful, but require an awful lot of setup. Again, links below. If you really like to play around with code, if you have something called an FTDI adapter, then this uh, potentially is still an option. You plug it into one of the telemetry ports into your Pixhawk or something like the Durandal that I've looked at recently. The pin outs are the same. You plug it into the telemetry port, make sure it's talking Mavlink at the right speed, and then the Minimo SD will add that information on an on-screen display onto the video that's coming in from the camera. Because it's quite involved, I'm very pleased to say that my recommendation is if you want an OSD with this stuff is to use this Holybro product. And let me talk a little bit more about how you set that up, what it is. It's, it's nice and inexpensive. It comes with all the cables. You just kind of clip it all together. It's plug and play and you can get an on-screen display very easily. 
This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner, or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T motor, ESCs, motors, and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightwear and Bennywick LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. Now the really good news is the Holybro Micro OSD V2 is really cheap. It's only about £16. I'll put a link in the description. And the cool thing is it comes with all the cables ready to connect in. Now the cable it comes with is perfect to plug into a Pixhawk Cube or something like the Durandal or one of the other Holybro kinds of Pixhawk. Even includes the heat shrink to go over the top when you have it all put together. Now the manual itself is pretty good. It goes through how you configure everything up and in there is all of the connection diagrams, including all of the pinouts. The only other thing you have to do is of course, plug in the cable from the micro OSD into your Pixhawk or Durandal or whatever it is, and just plug it into one of the telemetry ports because that's the way the data is going to come across from the flight controller into the micro OSD V2. And then it's going to use that telemetry data to overlay the on-screen display onto the FPV image. Only a couple of things you need to check inside Mission Planner. In full parameters, you want to search for Serial X. Uh, I plugged mine into Telemetry 1. So I need to set up Serial 1 board as 57 for 57600. And I also need to set up Serial 1 protocol to 1, which is going to be good old-fashioned Mavlink, and that is going to be the right speed and the right protocol for everything to work. If you've done that and you've plugged it into the right place, the next time you boot it up, you should find that you are looking at the on-screen display. Arducam OSD V2.1, it'll come up, it'll say that it's uh, waiting for heartbeats, that's the Mavlink data. Once the Mavlink data starts to flow, it'll populate the display and it'll look like this. This is the default layout. If you're happy with that, then that's all you need to do. However, if you really want to, you can change the way the layout looks, but you're going to need an extra little bit of hardware. This is covered in the advanced section of the manual and you're going to need something called an FTDI adapter and wire it up as shown in this diagram. When you've done that, it looks like this. And then you plug the FTDI into your computer, run the little program that's available to download from the link on the Hollybro website. And then once you've got ArduCam OSD config running, then you can go through and you can start to change all the different settings. And in here you have the ability to select whether you want the units to be metric, imperial, the warning levels, whether or not you want the OSD to toggle channels, because you can set up two uh, views, if you like, panel one and panel two. And then by moving the control on a particular RC channel, you can switch between them. So typically you might have panel one being the full one and panel two being one with a minimum amount of information is a common way to use it. While you're in here, you can also drag all of the elements around you can turn them on and off and you can position them on the screen i'd always recommend while you're doing this just have the osd powered up with your goggles on so you can make sure that you're not pushing anything off the edge of the screen unfortunately this on-screen display doesn't allow you to upload different font files uh, which the older version of the mini osd used to and that allowed you to put font files on there that are a little bit more small and compact uh, the default one as you saw was a little bit blocky but it does mean that if you have an old ftdi adapter rattling around you can get into this and change it to work in exactly the way you want to and of course it doesn't matter whether or not you're going to use an ardu copter or an ardu plane it's going to work in the same way so once mine was set up then it was just a case of me installing it into the model so i put a camera in the nose of this particular plane that i'm putting together put the micro osd v2 out of the way 
and have the power connection into my video transmitter and everything's working. Only thing to be careful of course is to make sure that the power is being supplied from the micro OSD V2 for both the video transmitter and the camera are voltages that those two pieces will accept because that isn't something you can change. But hopefully that's interesting for those of you who want to do this. I would recommend now these days don't mess around with the minimum OSDs from eBay and then try and source all the cables and then do all the messing about. If you want the default layout, this is a plug and play option for Pixhawk. And if you get your hands on an FTDI adapter, you can download the software for your PC, plug the FTDI adapter in and configure it to work in the way that you want. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.